Welcome to 100 Yards of Football. Today is our college football history special. We're going all the way back September the 23rd, 1978, Alabama versus USC. If you like the video today, please come in and share it. Excuse me as I get settled here. I'm your host, Vincent Turner. And 78 was a very special year, so I'm going to highlight this very important football game that happened during the college football season that year. Well, 78 was a very special year for me because I was a freshman at the University of Arkansas. And at that time, it was a very special time because college football was really starting to come over the heat. And me being at Arkansas, Arkansas had a great football program at that time, and they was coming off an Orange Bowl victory over Oklahoma in the 1978 Orange Bowl. So Arkansas ended up being rated top 10 that year. But me being on campus for three weeks at the University of Arkansas, which is located in Fairville, Arkansas, up in the North Mountain, shout outs today, Pig Suey. I was in the dorm on this special day with some of my greatest friends that I've really and built great relationships with, with my man, Victor Mouse out of Magnolia, Arkansas, Larry Cooper out of Magnolia, Arkansas, Ronald Nichols out of Little Rock, Arkansas, and my cousin, Samuel Turner, who's up in heaven right now. He was out of West Memphis, Arkansas. And we saw this great game, USC and Alabama. What was so special about this game is that Alabama came in ranked number one, USC was number five. Alabama was on the road based on the fact what happened back in the 1977 and the Alabama ended up number two in the country. They had a very impressive win over Ohio State in the Sugar Bowl that year. Then USC was coming in. There was a lot of questions surrounding them, but they had a talented football team. But everybody was questioning, did they have the right coach? He was in his third year, John Robinson. And think about the 70s. USC had built a monster with John McKay, but he had went on to the pro ranks and he was coaching with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So you had two teams that was ranked in the top 10 and Alabama was number one. Then two weeks earlier, Alabama had opened up on national television on ABC on Saturday night and beat a very good Nebraska team. They had Javis Redwine, they had I.M. Hill, they had George Andrews. So Alabama proved to the country that we are real with this. And then when you looked at that Alabama team, they were strong. They had one of the best running backs in the country, Tony Nathan. They had a great center in Dwight Stevenson. They had a good quarterback in Jeff Rutledge. On the defensive side, they had Barry Krause, EJ Jr., Don McNeil, Marty Lyons. So this Alabama team was stacked. And then don't let me leave out Major Ogilvy, an outstanding running back. And USC was coming down on that Saturday afternoon, bringing a fantastic football team. One of the best teams that's ever been assembled under John Robinson. But let's get to the game. Kicked off about 3.15 Central Standard Time. You had Keith Jackson. You had Eric Parsegian. You had 80,000 fans at Legion Field. It was hot, 95 degrees on AstroTurf, and it was getting ready to kick off. And everybody knew Alabama was ready to play. And boy, I had pizza and I had some beer called Pap's Blue Ribbon. Yes, sir. I'm not ashamed. I had that Pap's Blue Ribbon and me and my guys had that pizza rocking. And then all you can hear on that television screen, because it was the national game of the day on ABC, they was getting ready to kick off. USC and Alabama. And all you can hear is the Alabama fans. Whoa. Boom. Kicked off. Tony Nathan takes the opening kickoff for the University of Alabama, takes it back 45 yards. Alabama starts on their own 45, and all of a sudden the crowd is going crazy, and everybody's saying, roll, tie, go, roll, tie, go. You can go look at the game on YouTube. Well, what Alabama does, they go three and out on their first possession. Woody Humphrey comes in the game. He gets off a 30-yard punt. USC starts on their own 25-yard line. And the Trojans offense goes to work. And that offense was led by Charles White, who won the Heisman Trophy a year later from San Fernando, California. And they had a smooth quarterback by the name of Paul McDonald. And they had three receivers that can fly. Raymond Butler, Calvin Sweeney, and Kevin Williams, all 155 pounds of them. 
and they had an offensive line that was special, led by my man, Anthony Munoz, Pat Howe, and Brad Buddy. And we know how Anthony Munoz ended up. One of the best to ever done it on the next level with the Cincinnati Bengals. Well, what the Trojans do, they go 75 yards and six when they're about eight plays. They go all the way down to the Alabama one yard line. The crowd is starting to get quiet. On the next play from the Alabama one yard line, Charles White, who had 38 yards in that drive on five carries, fumbles. And all of a sudden, Alabama recovers. And it seemed like the game was going to change. And the crowd goes crazy. Well, on the next possession, Alabama doesn't do anything offensively. It's three and out. Woody Humphreys comes back in the game. There's a key tidbit about Woody Humphreys. He killed Alabama that day with the kicking game. He only averaged 32 yards a punt. And his second punt in the game went only 30 yards, and USC took over on the 40-yard line with almost the end of the first quarter. And you know what happened? The first play, Charles White. He's really on the sidelines. He's feeling bad. He's feeling sick, but he's determined to get back in the game. That first carry from the 40-yard line of Alabama, he takes it to the house, and he steps in the end zone, and USC goes up 7 to nothing, and all of a sudden the crowd is quiet, and the people in Alabama are starting to get maybe this SC team. It's like that team in the 70s that came in and changed college football. Then we kick off the second quarter. Nothing's going on. Both defenses are playing well. Alabama's starting to get grips so their defense. EJ Jr., Wayne Hamilton, Brian Braggs, Curtis McGill start making plays. Then on the other side, USC is playing at a high level defensively. Dennis Johnson, Gary Cobb, Eric Scrogans, Ronnie Lott, Demis Smith, Marion Lapkin, all of them start making plays. And a true freshman from Augusta, Georgia, Chip Banks is giving a lot of love that day. But what happens is SC gets the ball with about eight minutes in the second quarter. They're at their own one-yard line. And to me, there was the key point of the football game. They go on a 85-yard drive, 23 plays, a mixture of running and passing. They run off eight minutes of the drive, and Frank Jordan kick, ends up kicking a 40-yard field goal. And Anthony Munoz, Pat Howe, Brad Buddy, and that USC offensive line takes over the game. The running of Lynn Kane, the White Ford, and Charles White on that drive, and the pass is caught not of a large variety of yardage from Kevin Williams, Raymond Butler, oh my God, and Kevin Sweeney. SC to me takes control of that game, and they end up going at halftime leading 10 0. Then the second half starts. As he gets the ball in the third quarter, they starting to make run. The first two plays of the third quarter, they gained six yards. On third and four, Charles White is having a great game. He had 142 yards in the first half. He fumbles again. On USC side of the ball, on USC's 41-yard line, first play of the second half for Alabama, what happens? The young man, by the name of Major Ogilvy takes it 41 yards to the end zone. And all of a sudden, boom, boom, bam, boom. Alabama's back in the game. It's 10-7. And all you can hear is that Alabama band going with their fight song. And then the Alabama faithful, all 80,000, I'm going to say, roll, tide, roll. Then USC gets the ball the next possession. They go three and out. And all of a sudden, the crowd is at a high pitch. But Alabama doesn't do anything in the third quarter. So you have both defenses playing well. Then we go into the fourth quarter. And that's when the, when, when the game really turns special. Where Alabama starts the third quarter, fourth quarter, on the 18-yard line. What happens is, again, they go three and out. Woody Humphreys kills Alabama all day with his punt. That time he has a 38-yard punt. Now, let me take that back. A 33-yard punt. USC starts over on Alabama's 38-yard line. What happens? Five plays later, USC is moving the ball inside the Alabama six-yard line. They take Charles White out of the game. Offensive coordinator at the time, Paul Hackett, says, you know what? 
We know Alabama's going to be jamming the lamb and scrimmage. So we're going to take Charles White out. We're going to move all 155 pounds of Kevin Williams in the backfield. But what we're going to do, we're going to run him out of the backfield in the end zone on a special slant play where he's going to go back on the cross of the field in the end zone. And you know what happened? Paul McDonald throws a pretty pass, and USC goes up 17-7. and seven. The soon kickoff. Alabama gets it again. They go three and out. The SC defense is playing well. And just to show you how well they played that day, they forced six turnovers. They intercepted Jeff Rutledge four times, and they caused two fumbles. Well, Woody Humphrey has his best punt of the day from the Alabama 10-yard line in the fourth quarter. It goes 39 yards. The up back, Mr. Ronnie Eli, receives the ball. SC takes over on the 41-yard line of Alabama. And we know how Ronnie Lott's career went in the NFL. Three-time Super Bowl champion with the San Francisco 49ers. Two plays later, Kevin Williams is out there on the slide, on, on the outside now. He runs a go pattern. Paul McDonald throws a pretty ball in there. Don McNeil, the All-American quarterback, cornerback from Alabama, has a bean on the ball. And the ball goes through his hands. And, oh, my God. Kevin Williams catches in stride. And all of a sudden, with almost nine minutes to go in the fourth quarter, SC goes up 24 to 7. And all of a sudden, the eyes are Trojan. Hollywood is coming out. Bob Hope, Johnny Carson, the great OJ Simpson at the time. The Trojan faithful said, This is what Trojan football is about. We've been the number one team with nine minutes and 31 seconds to go in Birmingham, Alabama. But on the assuming kickoff, we know Alabama's not going to go away. They got too much of a prior coach in Bear Bryant, too many prior players. Alabama has their best offensive drive of the day. They go 86 yards in six plays. In a minute 19, Jeff Rutledge go back and he hit a true freshman tight end, Barry Couch, for a touchdown, 41 yards. And all of a sudden, it's 24 to 14. On the assuming kickoff, SC has a decent kick return, takes it up to the Alabama four, I mean USC 41 yard line. But that's when that Alabama defense stands up tall. First play, they sack Paul McDonald for a nine yard sack. Next play, a 15 yard penalty. SC is pushed back. And it goes three and out after that. They have a punt. It goes to the Alabama 44 yard line. Alabama takes over with about, I would say about seven minutes ago. They own another drive. Tony Nathan is doing his thing. Jeff Rutledge, even though he's had a bad game, he's having a pretty good game. Bruce Bolton, the wide receiver, senior out of my hometown, the 901 Memphis, Tennessee, has a couple of clutch catches. And Alabama's down at the USC 18-yard line. But what happens from there, US, Alabama gets it to the one-yard line. They run three plays, no yardage. They call a timeout. And on fourth and one, <coughs> excuse me, decide to go with the young man, the All-American running back, Tony Nathan, over the top, and SC stops him for no game. That great USC defense, Dennis Johnson, Eric Scrogans, Mary Lapkin, Ronnie Lott, Dennis Smith, they stopped him for no game. SC takes over. They punt it back to Alabama. They go three and out. Alabama gets the ball back with about 3.30 to go. They have another small drive. But Tony Nathan fumbles. USC recovers. It's recovered by Ronnie Lott. The game is over. USC has came down and shocked the world and beat the number one team in the country, Alabama 24-14. to What happens back after that? The 1978 college football season becomes pretty special. <clears throat> Alabama doesn't lose another game. They end up going in the bowl game ranked number two. They beat number one Penn State in the Sugar Bowl. Outstanding goal line stand by Barry Krause. They beat a real good Penn State team at the end of the year, led by Matt Millen, Bruce Clark, very good Penn State team coached by Joe Paterno. USC, the rest of the season, they get upset about three weeks ago by our Arizona State team that had the great Mark Malone. Had a true freshman running back by the name of Gerald Riggs, 20 to 7. But SC is able to regroup. Then they go out to the Rose Bowl and beat a fine Michigan team, 17 to 10. They had Ricky Leach at quarterback and Harlan Huckleberry at running back. 
And what we have, we have two teams. The next day, after New Year's Day, who's going to be number one? Well, the coaches poll votes USC number one because of the victory they had on September the 23rd, 1978 over Alabama. And then AP votes Alabama number one. So we have a split champion that year. Alabama and USC are national champions. But what stuck out of my mind at the end of that year, there was two very special football teams that I think could play in this era today. And that what made that game so special on September the 23rd, 1970. You had a lot of people that went on and done very well in the National Football League. I'm going to start with Alabama. Don McNeil had a great career at the Miami Dolphins. E.J. Jr. was a first-round pick of the Phoenix Cardinals now, formerly Arizona Cardinals. My man, Marty Lyons, had a great career with the New York Jets. Jeff Rutledge did his thing with the New York Giants. Man, just so many great players was that on that team. Barry Krause, first round pick with the Baltimore Colts. And then you look at that USC team, that 7 8 team had 22 starters that went to the National Football League. And to me, when you compare that football team to all the other great teams, the 2001 Miami Hurricanes, they put a lot of people in the National Football League, even the LSU Tigers of 2019, even the University of Alabama 2021. This USC team was special, man. Think about the star power and all the players on this national championship team coached by John Robinson, Anthony Munoz, Brad Buddy, Pat Howe, Ricky Gray, who didn't even start. He was a freshman. Chip Banks, a freshman. Cleveland Browns finest. Ronnie Lott, I just mentioned him, San Francisco 49ers. Dennis Smith, Denver Broncos. Charles White, Hasson Trophy winner, Cleveland Browns. Marcus Allen, true freshman, Hasson Trophy winner, Oakland Raiders, where LA Raiders, Super Bowl champion. Paul McDonald, Cleveland Browns. Jeff Fisher, Chicago Bears, Super Bowl champion. Coach of the Tennessee Titans. I can go on and on. Eric Scroggins. Gary Cobb, this USC team was special. And as Paul Bar Bryan said, I know there was a collection of great athletes and they were like skiing mules that day. But this team could be the greatest he's ever seen perform on the field. And kudos to that football game that evening. And after that game was over, I had a little buzz. But I went back and thinking this, drinking my Paps Blue Ribbon. Is that, is that ever going to be a football team with this much star power and the mighty USC Trojans from Hollywood, Los Angeles, California? And it was a song out during that time when I was a freshman that I used to go to the party and it used to get me up jumping. And they had a great bass line, one of my favorite bands of all time. And they were out of Dayton, Ohio. And they had a song that went like, it's all the way live. One more time. It's all the way live. The lead singer, Mark Wood, and Lakeside. That day, the USC Trojans, they were Lakeside all the way live. Thank you for watching the video this morning. It was good to break down USC and Alabama. And by the way, I want to give kudos also to that 1978 Alabama team. I know Alabama's got it rocking right now with the 2021-2020 team that won the national championship, and they're doing their thing at Alabama. But before I end the video, end the video I want to give kudos to that 78 Alabama team. Marty Lyons, New York Jets. Barry Krause, the Baltimore Colts. EJ Jr., Arizona. Don McNeil, Miami. Tony Nathan, Miami, Dwight Stevens, Miami, to Alabama, Sweet Home Alabama by the band Leonard Skinner. Thank you. God bless. It's been an honor. It's been a pleasure. I've had fun. Y'all enjoy the rest of the day here on June the 2nd, 2021. And to my producer, who's done an outstanding job today and producing all the videos I've been on, and I want to give him much love. He's the youngest member of 100 Yards Football. And he's going to be coming up at 6 p.m. doing the college football previews this evening. I believe he has Notre Dame. I want to say he's got Notre Dame. It's one of his teams. They're very talented. And I call him babyface, Mr. Logan Landis. Thank you today for your hard work. God bless you on 100 Yards of Football.